You want to see something funny? Look. Hopla! No, it doesn't work. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> Hey guys, salut, this is Alex, and let me show you what can be done with brioche dough, besides, of course, uh, brioche bread. I made this video recently about how to make the perfect brioche bread, so if you missed it, don't worry, I will put a link in the description box down below or at the end of this video. Many delicious twists can be done with brioche dough. However, brioche croissant is not one of them. But I'll tell you more about this later in the video. For the moment, let's stick to what's working. And first, let's do some donuts. One. Yes, to make brioche donuts, just flatten the dough first to about a thickness of five millimeters. Now use a proper cookie cutter to shape professional donut shapes out of it. Then use another specific tool to cut out a hole in the center. Let them proof on a baking tray in a warm and dark environment covered with plastic wrap. After about 30 minutes they should have puffed up. If not, just let them rise a bit more. Now heat up some oil in a pan or in a wok, in a deep fryer, whatever, and as soon as you get 180 degrees Celsius or 360 Fahrenheit, it's time to gently place them in, in small batches, of course, for a short period of time, usually two or three minutes tops. When they are golden brown, get them out and do your sprinkling, glazing, stuffing thing. It's very personal. I like mine very plain, just with sugar. Oh, they are so soft and fluffy and compared to classic donuts, it might be more buttery as you do and the color might also be a bit more yellow and rich. Two. So I guess with brioche bread you can also make some nice brioche chocolate Nutella swirls. So I have this uh, genuine question that I want to ask you guys. It's no joke. I just want to know if Everybody knows what Nutella spread is. Shut up, everybody knows what Nutella spread is. Yeah, but the problem is that there is the West and there is the North and there is the South and there is the East. So my question is legitimate. Now roll this dough and form a cylinder. That moment you need to stick this in the fridge and if you don't, it's gonna look less neat. Anyway, cut it lengthwise but leave about an inch uncut on one end. Now going from one end to the other, just swap those strings a few times. Next, give it a swirl and gently seal this by sticking those pieces together. Try to make it round and pretty. Proof 30 minutes covered with plastic wrap. Now brush it with an egg wash. In the oven it goes at 180 Celsius or 360 Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes or less. Out of the oven you'll get those gorgeous and tempting golden chocolate swirls. The smell stands somewhere between hazelnut, butter and chocolate. And yes, I do have a terrible job. So I want to share with you a massive update of this studio, like by massive I mean unavoidable. And it's this oven which was installed this summer. You see it's a cool oven, it's just very convenient that I place this oven in an upper position. I've also made all those little uh, temperature translations which are very convenient for all you out there in the world. Are not so many different modes on this one. You get force fan, you get classic, you've got grill, like broiling. It just works perfectly. You've got this great drawer full of oven things, like baking trays, mold, special gloves, really great gloves, many things to bake properly. 
So also a quick notice on the side, I sometimes use this uh, temperature probe, which is very convenient if you want to have like a precise idea of what goes inside your oven. I know in my videos it's always really, you know, simple and, and spontaneous and all that stuff, but behind all my recipe, when I say 180 Celsius or 360 Fahrenheit, I want to be 100% sure that it's 180 Celsius or 360 Fahrenheit. Yes! I said it! Three. With brioche dough, of course you can make individual brioche, like for example brioche buns or Parisian brioche. Just divide the dough into smaller bowls, then shape them the way you like. Here I made a few buns which came perfect at the end, but my favorite was the Parisian brioche. To make it pinch and twist a small proportion of your dough bowl and then gently push it back. You'll get two bowls, one on top of each other, with the lower one being significantly larger than the upper one. Now grab a pair of scissors and make evenly space cuts into the big one. And that's how you get a Parisian individual brioche. Proof 30 minutes covered with plastic wrap. Brush it with an egg wash to make it shine and remember that's only one beaten egg and two tablespoons of milk. Now bake it on a baking tray or in individual baking molds. It should stay in the oven for about 20 minutes at 180 Celsius or 360 Fahrenheit or until they go golden brown. The result is great, shiny, golden, light, fluffy, I mean it tastes everything like the big brioche bread, but it's more like the evil work of a selfish mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, four. Finally, with brioche dough, you can make a brioche croissant, but honestly, you should not. So I tried it a few times in many different ways, but it's not that good. So what is the problem? The dough thickness has a massive impact on what I call the fluffy effect dilemma. Let me elaborate. Right, so let's get to the board. By the way, this is my fridge, but it's also going to be very helpful to explain a few things. All our creations so far had consistent thickness. The bigger one for the brioche bread, smaller one for the donuts, the Parisian brioche and the swirl, but still consistent thickness. And that's very important. So, however, croissants have this uh, lovable and despicable shape where the center is significantly thicker than the ends, which means that the center will bake slower than the ends. It's a problem. This is bullshit. Then why croissants are good? Idiot. Well, classic croissants are made with puff pastry, which, when slightly overcooked, get super crispy and delicious. Like, for example, this is my favorite part, the ends on a croissant. And brioche, on the other hand, is made to be fluffy. It cannot go crispy and delicious. It only gets super dry. It's not that good. And that's why brioche croissant sucks so much. Unless, of course, you make a brioche dough puff pastry thing. But that's really annoying and time consuming. And also, that's another story. So guys, that's it. I hope you like those brioche dough twists. And if you did, then give it a like, a thumbs up. If you know other cool things that you can do with brioche dough, please let everyone know in the comments. So that's it, it's a big community and a big family and the love is widely spreaded and evenly distributed. Last people click subscribe because I make new videos on Sunday and it's mostly about making simple delicious food like of course that original brioche bread recipe. Golden, fluffy, buttery, yellow, shiny, yeah! Also, I like you to understand what you do. Like, for example, that obsessive series about pizza where I went down into every little detail, every little ingredients of a Neapolitan pizza made at home with a domestic oven. Always, always question the status quo. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but that seems like a good closing line. Bye-bye, salut!